Good morning, folks. That was EVE followed by the CME and 304 angstroms. Last night the sun declared she was capable of stirring, popped another M flare, but we'll have to come back to the sun. Sutton Lake, West Virginia, blue-green algae. Cyanobacteria is not always harmful, but I have reported dead pets and sick kids from it in the past, so be careful. My favorite buoy is currently off, seems to get shut down periodically since coming back online a few weeks ago. No major quaking in days. Atlantic Ridge took a rumble yesterday and Papua New Guinea is swarming this morning. Eyes there going forward, if anything. I seem to remember the Pacific, forecasted to be a little weaker in terms of tropical development than the Atlantic. Up till now, however, the only Atlantic storm came from the Pacific and this makes number three out here south of Mexico. Shouldn't be too bad. Quick note for Northern Australia, isolated precipitation will be severe and flooding could result. Let's focus on the power low right in the middle of Canada. She's driving air north all the way from the Gulf, but these lows atop the Rocky Mountains are spreading out our heat and moisture a bit. It means we probably won't have a major convergence line tonight, but we will instead have a very large area under storm watch. Coming to space weather, Russian neutron monitor showing decrease in cosmic rays. Flipping to Bartol, we see spaceship Earth indicating much of the same with a simultaneous drop in the muon count. This can happen when we have severe space weather impact arriving and engulfing our planet. Now today's solar wind shows an easing of impact, but yesterday's interplanetary shock acted as an umbrella or encapsulation of plasma, charged ions, each with a charged force, positive or negative. That plasma acts like a magnetic shield against the cosmic rays. Earth's shield is holding up, by the way, from the impact. We did get worldwide auroral activity. Protons did manage to hit storm level. Nothing to fear at this point as it's a low level event. You can see the radiation entering Earth at the polar regions on the DRAP, which also shows the X-ray flux. You can see a smaller flare after the M2 from last night, which opened this video. The blue directly under the solar position represents atmospheric energizing by the X-ray flare. It's also worth mentioning that electrons continue to be elevated. Coming back to flares, it appears we may see some more action. First, I have doubts it will be from these guys departing unless they fire after turning the limb. Despite large groups with magnetic mixing between them, even the Delta spot of 1775 couldn't fire. So far, we've taken two M flares from these regions headed in now, including the big one from last night. Satellites show no major CME and Enlil's are not updated. As you watch Jupiter exit to the right from his conjunction days ago, you see a northern CME leaving the disk. This was produced yesterday as a northern filament we've watched for days ripped off the sun. This is not coming near Earth, but something interesting happened. The filament was reborn immediately or was able to reconstruct himself from the lingering plasma, still a major Earth-directed eruption threat. Well folks, it appears that either the second half of the watch failed or as stated yesterday, the northern coronal hole was actually attached to the central piece at the beginning of the quake watch when we took three six-pointers in a few hours. Umbral field is now closed, and I'm eager to compare this to the coronal hole actually on the equator turning in now. Helio viewer still glitchy, so we're going with SDO downloads to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.